And we are back. And we're back. And we're we, back. Uh, I had a spectrum outage and we lost our Wi Fi. And I uh, will tell you, viewers, a uh, little secret. I nattered for a while thinking he'd come back. But you you didn't see that part because I'm going to cut that out of part one because it's just <laughs> not necessary. Um, so what we were calling this is a cliffhanger. Yeah. And you know, unlike the old romance shows like Moonlighting, they have the will they or won't they cliffhangers. Sure. Or Cheers is another good example where they was will they or won't they, Sam and Diane. This is a will they or won't they talk about the song they brought up. Right. Right. Yeah. And Will people we? say it jumped it, that show jumped the shark once they started talking about the song that they said they talked about. <laughs> That's true. Nobody will tune in after that. So we we started talking about House of Blue Light. House of Blue Light. And I'll remind you where we started. It was actually kind of perfect because it cut out right when we had gotten done talking about medical issues. <laughs> right. So and, like half an hour. Uh, yep. <laughs> and I haven't had any new ones lately, which is nice. Oh, I have a I have a new cold. Oh, congratulations. That's great. Thank you very much. I just started a new cold. How retro though. A cold. How nice. Right. I had COVID three weeks ago. And then <laughs> I got better from that. And I felt okay for about a week. And then I started coming down with this cold. And I told someone this uh, having a cold like right after COVID feels like I'm, I went to see a COVID cover band. <laughs> like, oh, it's kind of the same, I guess. <laughs> if you close your eyes, it's COVID. That's pretty wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's where I started and then you froze which I was now I know not because I was making such a bad point that you were stunned. Um, it was, um, and by the way, it was the, uh, there's something great about zoom when it stops working, your picture doesn't disappear. You just go. <laughs> yeah. There's something fun about that. Like you're hanging on every word. Yeah. So what I said, and now I can say it better. It reminds me of a Doors song. Oh, sure. But, but like a very specific Doors kind of song, one of their bar songs. Yeah, one of their like Roadhouse anthems. Yeah, in fact, Roadhouse, I got. I woke up this morning and I got myself a beer. Yeah. I like that song a lot. <laughs> I'm come in my oh. way and I drink myself a beer. <laughs> that song's so good. That's a jam. Say, roll, baby, roll. That's just a good look. good old tune. This reminded me of that. That is very fair. Yep. Do you think he's aping or influenced by it, or is this just what bar so songs sound like? I th <laughs> I think there's. I mean, I don't think the Doors started it. Mm. Uh, like uh, it was honky tonk country. Yep. And then some like rock and roll guys in the sixties were like, "Oh, we'll we'll do a rock version." Yeah, but it's essentially the same like chord progressions, and certainly the same observations. Yeah, um, yeah, and it just like evolves a little bit, and then it regresses a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> there's not a lot. I guess uh, something about bars that don't invite a lot of uh, innovation. Or introspection, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess that's what we're all avoiding there. Yeah, the introspection happens after you're kicked out of the bar and you're on a curb and you think, ooh, I'm choices, man. Yeah. Made some choices. And there's whole other genres for that, for after yeah. the bar. But I like this song. It's nice. It's a yeah. nice little jam. It's legitimately, an, it's upbeat, but... A little, uh, not not sardonic is not the word, but it's just a little, like, annoyed at life in a good Billy Joel way. Sure. In the, in the way that a bar song will be. I wonder why it ended up being, because it wasn't a released thing, right? This is a deep cut. It's like a B-side from a 45 I had. Yeah. Like Allentown or something, <laughs> and then this. 
Yeah, so I wonder why songs like that end up going that way. If this was just a, like, I got to fill it up and here's something, but I don't love it. Maybe that's it. Maybe he just didn't love it. Possible. I mean, I've never heard him play it or talk about it. Yeah. There's something he didn't care for, I guess. And it's a perfectly nice little tune. Absolutely. And it's very funny, though, just <laughs> one of your favorite thoughts, things in the lyrics is where it starts. One of your favorite words it starts with. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> shall I continue? <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah. how funny that is. I feel like me. it's appropriate. Yeah. You know, for this song. Uh, I think the, the your your door song also starts with well. Yeah, when <laughs> I woke up, the, you're right. It does. It's a, a long tradition. I guess there's a surrender immediately. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let me tell you what happened. Well, and I'm I'm driving on down to the subside bar. I think it's Surfside on where I'm looking at it. Oh, see, I've got a bad sight. Yeah, I'm at billyjoel.com. I'll never learn. <laughs> I'm going to stick with my shitty one. <laughs> Surfside makes a lot more sense. I'll say that. Yeah. These days, my old shovel head <laughs> should go travel far. She don't travel far. I'm going to go to billyjoel.com. <laughs> <laughs> shovel head's a truck, right? It's a, a Harley. Oh, it's a motor motorcycle. Yes, that's right. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Surfside makes me think Long Island. Yeah. I think there are a lot of things called Surfside. <laughs> yeah. Bad. So you go to songs and lyrics on billyjoel.com. Yeah. And then you scroll down. That's a blue light. Oh, there you go. And you get that weird drawing of him from oh, my and I'll just do a, a quick aside. Matt Spayeth says, as a 29-year-old lifelong Billy Joel fan, I cannot believe me believe it took me until today to hear the song for the first time. No matter oh. what tracks I hear by him, from his classical to his oldie style, oldie style. No, they're just old. Blues, oh. pop, and everything in between. Oh, it. I will never cease to be amazed by the way his music speaks to me. Thank you, Billy, for making my life a little better with each song you've written and slash or performed. So nice. Well, good job, Matt. And he, he discovered this. Oh, he's a little older now. He's probably 35 now. That was posted six years ago. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he sounds like a nice fellow. Uh, so, yeah. I'd hang out with Matt. I would, too. And he's not he's that much younger than me now that I see it was six years ago. So I think it'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, he could look up to you like an older brother. Yeah. Uh, these days, my old shovel head, she don't travel far, but she goes where I want. And now I want to be where all the locals go to keep each other company. Great. Yeah. Um, they all drive Chevy pickups in the morning. They all ride Harley Davidsons at night. Great. They all work for somebody who makes all the money and pays them just enough to get tight. <laughs> House of Blue Light. Great. Wow. Those are nice little lyrics. I like uh I like driving the Chevy in the daytime because that's the, you're getting around your yep. life. Your work truck. Yep. And then uh, you got your fun mobile. Uh, quick aside, my brother for a while had a secret Harley, had a secret motorcycle because he wasn't sure his wife would be okay with him driving a motorcycle. Yeah. Again. And then she said, you should get a motorcycle. And he had to pretend to buy it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> right. Oh, I got this used. <laughs> um, my, I remember my dad wanted a motorcycle. Yeah, my mom wouldn't let him, and she talked him down to a moped. And then he just kind of acted like it was a motorcycle. <laughs> he had, like, the jackets and shit. <laughs> but it was a fully just a shitty moped. That's great. She's right, by the way. How old was That's your right. dad when he was thinking about getting a motorcycle? I mean, too old. 
I was in high school, so he was too old. Yeah. That's the thing is start when you're young and that's fine. Like, you yeah. know, when you see an old skateboarder and they're good, it's because they at one point were a young skateboarder. Yeah. Nobody in my age group is like, I'm going to take up the skateboard. No, it's, uh, it's so far to fall. Yeah. It's only if you were like, the only reason I think you can do it. All right. You went out. Hold on. Come on, Whitney. Go out. <laughs> And go out. Come on. I love you. The only reason is if you've got a messed up hip, but it's not quite messed up enough yet to get replaced. So you're like, hey, what? Here's an idea. Let me push it over the edge. Yeah. yeah. I've got friends uh, my age who every winter they're like, hey, we're going to go skiing. Do you want to go? Nope. Because I didn't do that growing up. No. Yeah. Well, I don't know what happens when you fall down, but I think it'll be bad if I do it. They yeah. know how to fall down, at least, probably. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you don't want to be the, the next Sonny Bono. No. Um, man, yeah. yeah and uh, the only reason to go, I guess, is if you thought, I'd like to be in a ski resort town, but I'm not going to ski. But the hot cocoa sounds good. The towns but, were pretty great. Yeah. That's the dream. Yeah. There's lots of hot tubs and like steak places yeah so i'm like oh can i just do that part you ever go to one of those weird steak places where their hook is that they bring you the steak and there's a little grill by your table oh no i haven't seen that move man they're stupid <laughs> i just think it's such a bad idea like i understand i understand it's going to appeal to somebody but i'm like you could cook at home Right. Also, that seems doesn't it smoke up the dining room? <laughs> yeah, they're they're always pretty pretty dank and weird. I've been to a couple of them, and they're always in some little touristy town. Everything's yeah. brick, and usually what it is is they have a setup where they have multiple like pseudo chimneys at various big tables. Yeah. So, okay. So it's kind, of, and they're kind of in the round, like the the grill is around, so there's people seated around it. Okay, gotcha. And it, it seems like it would be fun, and but you, it, it isn't. <laughs> no. Yeah, that doesn't seem fun. Yeah, but I've I've gone to those places and it's fine. And there's a, the other version that they'll do is the hibachi version where you're not doing steaks, but it's like marinated meats, and that's a little better. Because at least they've done something for you in marinating the meat. Yeah, just meet me halfway. Yeah, do why? Why am I cooking? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this, this I'm place cooking. Is, you don't need to be here. Yeah. Restaurant. Yeah, exactly. This uh, is great because you put it on the table. You bring it. Make sure to leave the tip. What am I doing? What am I doing here? Yeah. Oh. Uh, well. Here's what I think. Um, these guys are making more money than Billy Joel thinks they're making, I think. Probably. You have Chevy pickups and Harley Davidsons. Yeah. So this is what... I think they're just alcoholics and they're bad with money. Yeah. And they're probably making union money, which is not too bad. Yeah, I would think. Yeah. What else do you need a truck for? Yeah. Uh, and I like the use of tight to mean drunk. Yeah. More of that. It's funny how tight and loose can both mean drunk. <laughs> that is funny. Uh, like is tight is... drunker than loose? <laughs> yeah, right. Get loose first, and then you get tight. Yeah, is that that's what happened. I get a little loose, and then you get a little tight. So they yeah, one of them is more drunk than the other. That's for sure. Uh, oh, that's, that's very weird that that happened. Yeah. It's a weird language we have. Yeah, I want I want to go get some drinks and get uh, medium, huh? What? <laughs> yeah, I want to get uh, just kind of regular. What? Yeah, that, that means drunk now. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like the kind of thing a drunk would make up. Yeah. Because uh, there would be no consistency. That makes sense. Is like, yeah, I'm all tight. Okay, I guess that means drunk now, and I don't want to fight this guy. So sure, that okay. means drunk. He's got a Harley. I don't want to mess with that. 
Well, I'm driving on down to meet a woman there. Oh. She got the long legs, the red hat, lips, and the golden hair. I like that a lot. I like the she got the long legs. I enjoyed she got that. The long legs. <laughs> the red lips and the golden hair. Golden hair is weird because it's it's like I got the long le legs, the red lips. Okay, kind of dirty. The golden hair, like out of a <laughs> kid's book. The golden yeah. hair. <laughs> it is a kid's book. Or off of like piano man. Right. She knows what to do to make a man feel good. Spoiler, by the way, it don't take much. So that yeah. does, I'm not impressed by her knowing those things. Yeah, and it's not enough to just know. She's the hardest working woman in this neighborhood, so I'm assuming she's a prostitute. Sure sounds like it. She don't mind making breakfast in the morning. Oh. She don't mind making love every night. She says, come see me, honey, and bring lots of money. Yeah, she's a prostitute. Yeah. Because we know how to treat you right. Oh, interesting. Okay, so collectively, we know how to treat you right. So I'm assuming this we is... We are at the uh, House of Blue Light. Yeah, the House of Blue Light. This is a place where ladies come out and go, hey, sugar. And you go, yes, you. Um, and you pick one. I, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like it is a uh, house of ill repute. Yes. Uh, is it a strip club? I don't think so. I think it is a brothel. I wonder. That sounds right. I just feel like... It might be one of those all-purpose <laughs> roadhouses. Yeah. <laughs> a bar and also a brothel. And probably a diner. Yeah. You've been to strip clubs in your day, right? Yeah, I worked at some. Did you? What did you do? I was a bouncer. Wow. <laughs> Which uh, is not as intense as it sounds. You don't really have to do anything. Yeah. Most they're, most guys who are in there are like a scared. They're a scared yeah. of the ladies. Yeah. Like the ladies yell at them. That's enough. And then you just walk them to the door. <laughs> that was a decent job. Wow. Okay. You know, when I was 24 or whatever. Okay. How long did you do that gig? Oh, six months, maybe. Not very long. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you did it more than six months, you'd have a different perspective. You'd go, it's not too bad until the one night it is. <laughs> you have to get out. Yeah. Yeah. While it's still like a unique experience. Yeah. <laughs> Was this while you were in college? So, or like just after, I think. Okay. One of those times where I was just like wasting time in Tucson instead of getting on with my life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just find it. It's a funny thing that will happen at the strip club is that. You're like, you went there for whatever reason you went there. And I mean, I, we all go there for more or less the same reason. Sure. Although sometimes it's social because you're with your dumb friends. Right. But then every now and then you'll be there and you'll be like, well, I'll go there for the reasons a person goes there. <laughs> and some lady will whisper an offer in your ear and you go, oh, so other stuff happens here. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, yeah. That's not yeah. good. Fun. Yeah, and you have to make a choice. <laughs> yeah, there's a dark side to this trip club. It's funny, yeah, there's a, there's a dark side to the normally light and cheery. God, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, I'm saying brothel. I feel like this is a brothel. Yeah. Because she don't mind making breakfast in the morning, but then she don't mind making love every night. Nobody wants to do that every night. Not even dudes don't want to do that every night. Yeah, she's pathological. Yeah. But she makes breakfast? This is a very full-service hooker. Yeah, it, it feels like this is one of those one who gives you the girlfriend experience. <laughs> wow. Um, all right, I would do this little bridge. Sure. You know this life is filled with grief. <laughs> well, if there was ever a thesis sentence for Billy Joel. Yes. You know this life is filled with grief. Sometimes it gets you so down. you got to find yourself some kind of relief. There's a roadhouse right outside of town. 
Roadhouse of Blue Light. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. What, what is Again, there... I think Roadhouse is bar, strip club, diner. I was going to say, what does like Roadhouse list. mean? It's basically Angie's list for the exurbs. Okay. Whatever you need. There's, uh, go to the Roadhouse. Okay. Truck stop. Yeah, I don't know what makes it a roadhouse as opposed to any other kind of bar. Yeah. And I've seen the movie Roadhouse, and I still don't know. Yeah. Like, that's just a bar. Yeah, a that's bar. all that is. It's just a bar where you can get your ass kicked by a handsome man. Yeah, which is yeah. most bars, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the phrase, there's a roadhouse right outside of town. Yeah. I think it's a mistake. I, I don't have any problem with the lyrics, but I just think it's a mistake to say there's a roadhouse right outside of town. Roadhouse of Blue Light, I think we just should have stayed with House of Blue Light. Yeah. I don't know why we're suddenly calling it Roadhouse of Blue Light. If that felt like you were elucidating something by going, oh, I don't know what I'm supposed to glean from that. <laughs> no, it doesn't help. Yeah. What is the title of the song? Now you're confusing me about that. Yeah. I I think that's a misstep. And I, I think there was some feeling that that's clever. And then if you just took a little step back, you go, it isn't. Then you'd be fine. Right. Also, I, now I don't think we're in Long Island. Because I don't think and any bar in Rhode Island would, or Rhode Island, Long Island would be called a roadhouse. Yeah. Um. At least nowadays. Of course, nowadays, if you're driving out on Long Island, it's mostly like outlets. Right. Uh, or the Hamptons and like Gucci stores and very yeah. expensive restaurants. So I don't, maybe if this, he's doing his thing where I'm a character in a different state. Yeah. And I always thought roadhouses were cool and let me stick my nose in that. Yep. I could see that. He will do that. Well, I've been around the world a dozen times or more, and I never really knew what I was searching for till I came to this place on a midnight ride. I pulled next to a full dress Electra Glide. Electra Glide, I'm looking it up now. Yeah. Googling. I'm, I'm betting on another kind of motorcycle. Yeah. Um. It sounds like he's also on a motorcycle here. Yeah. I think he's just indulging his hobby in this song. Electroglide. Yep. It is a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Oh, nice. They had a band playing blues from Mississippi. They had a bar that kept customers in sight. Is this place closed down or is, he rem is this the idea I'm remembering a place and a time in my life. Yeah, I think just remembering a place. They had some fine architecture, and I think within this contest, the architecture is the lady. Ah, uh, clever. And a view that would get you to want to spend the whole damn night. Uh-huh, uh-huh. In the House of Blue Light. House of Blue Light. House. Of Blue. I like they had some fine architecture and a view that would get you to want to spend the whole damn night, because I do think that's what we're talking about. We're talking about this um yeah or <laughs> this whore with the golden hair yeah <laughs> who or you know sex positive this you know sex worker this yes lady making a living yep she's the hardest working woman in town yeah it's such a uh, funny thing that you remember uh donna summer had the she works hard for the money song yeah and I remember thinking at the time, and I still think it when I think about this song, when you ascribe that quality to somebody who is a sex worker, yeah, it's it's a really good jarring image because it means what you're saying is they do this a lot. Yeah, and it's not for fun. Yeah. My so a buddy of mine, he dated a woman who uh was a sex worker wow and uh they had a great relationship and it and he was very honest with me about how he was like yeah 
I, I realized at some point I couldn't be a hundred percent at peace with it. Yeah. And I couldn't imagine our relationship going far and that wasn't fair. So he let it go because he couldn't be what he figured she would need him to be. Yeah. And they still remained friends. Wow. And it was, it, and he, when he knew her, she was like young and in amazing shape. And then he saw her years later and she was just a little older and she was a little, you know, thicker. And, and I guess they had a frank conversation. He goes, what's that like? Is you, do you not get as much work anymore? And she goes, eh, more, just people who like different things. Wow. Yeah. And, and she had an amazing ability to compartmentalize. I think you have to. But it was a natural thing that was to her. So I think that's just got to, it's got to be personality because I, she had said to my friend, she said she just realized at some point that she really loved having sex. Yeah. But that it didn't mean much to her beyond that. And that's not true for everybody. No. It's certainly not true for me. Like, I, you know, that's why I never went into the business. <laughs> Oh, it's not that you're not a hard worker. No, no, I, you know, I do it at least every other night. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> you could probably still make a decent living. Yeah, you do fine. I'm twice on Saturdays. I do an early and a late show. <laughs> no way I'm going to make breakfast that often, though. No, I, yeah, I'm not the guy. Who Once a breakfast. week, maybe. I will give you the boyfriend experience, which is that I'll have sex with you for money. And then <laughs> I, I will ignore you. I won't get a job. Yeah. Well, I'll just play Xbox. Yeah, I, I'll give you the full boyfriend experience. Like, I have sex with you. I <laughs> bring my friends over unannounced. <laughs> this is a very funny sketch idea. It really is. <laughs> oh, there oh. was a, uh, a TV show a TV show called uh, The Girlfriend Experience, which is about a call girl. Oh, does that is it and a good show or is it an old show or a new show it's a old ish okay from six or eight years ago but it would be great to parody yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's really funny the boyfriend experience great oh I'm too drunk yeah. to do it tonight <laughs> yeah he, he was so great i really felt ignored <laughs> <laughs> I love the title of this song. Yeah. I want to know if that's the name of the bar or if it's like an idea. I Well, I'm Googling and I'm learning that House of Blue Light is the name of an album by the English rock band Deep Purple. That's funny. I wonder how much that has to do with it. That's funny. I'm sure a lot because that happens to so many songwriters where there's a little thing that's in the back. I mean, it happens to joke writers too. It just oh sure, there's a thing in the back of your head, and you don't know where it's from. And hopefully, right. it doesn't come out completely stolen. It just comes out in <laughs> right. Yeah, this is my take on it. Yeah, because yeah. that's fine I all the time we'll hear uh phrases and snippets of sentences You're like oh that's a cool sentence yeah or cool like what was amy poehler was on our show um and she was talking about her fake new year's resolutions and one of them was to make make friends with more robots and then she said something about a robot wedding and i thought that was like, oh, that's such a nice little two-word phrase <laughs> that I might steal and use somewhere else. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Robot wedding. Yeah. Great. Uh, really quick, because it's such a numb nut thing, and it won't be worth talking about in a week. I just wanted to mention, are, are you familiar with this nonsense? Of, what, what's that uh, cement-headed athlete comic who has a podcast? Why am I blinking on his name? Er, that's Jeff too popular. Yeah, Joe Rogan. Did you see the Joe Rogan thing where he was like recently? So what he said is Joe Biden's losing it. It right. was 
because Joe Biden had referenced Civil War era airport fields. Oh, yes. And then it turned out, no, actually, you're thinking of Trump. Trump's the one who referenced that. But then immediately this fucker, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt sometimes that he's a well-intentioned moron. I don't think he is well-intentioned because he immediately went, oh, so I guess he just kind of made a mistake. No, fuck (laughs) you. That's not, no. Not how it works. You get to do that. Yeah, if so, if my guy does it, fine. And if your guy does it, he's mentally ill. Yeah. All right. Look, if Joe Biden starts quoting Hitler, uh, I won't like him either. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, he just got confused. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was on Fox News was making fun of him for saying a different name for the um, for instead of the Hubble telescope, he mentioned the other telescope. Except he was referencing the other telescope, and they were the dumb ones. Oh, great. And when, even uh, walking it back was like, oh, well, I guess there is another telescope. Right, so now you're dumb, right? Right, right? so you're now dumb? that, you're going to say that you're dumb? No. No, that's, I mean, the whole thing is to be stupid and mad that they're stupid. Yeah. Ugh. It's frustrating being stupid. Yeah. And that's why that's why they're so upset all the time. Yeah, I don't understand you, what's happening. You got to imagine they said, "Look, there's a second telescope." Yeah, there's more than one telescope. Why would you need a second telescope? I've only ever heard of the one. <laughs> I mean, there's only one sky. Why would you need a it's overkill? God, uh, it's government waste. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what? The government didn't pay for this? Now I'm mad for another reason. Why didn't we make one? Okay, now, come on. Yeah. I hate them all. Yeah, I, we, uh, we're looking at cars right now, and one of the things is it's, it, at this car dealership, it's advertising that it has satellite. Yeah. And and there's this pamphlet that's, I get not a pamphlet, but there's a pamphlet version, but also a poster board. And on the poster board, it has a picture of a lady uh-huh. for the Sirius XM. And I see the lady, I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure I hate that lady. And it's <laughs> like, you can watch the Megan Kelly show or listen to the uh, Megan yeah. Kelly show in your car. I'm like, why are you advertising that? Why is that the one you chose? Yeah, what's the market? What's the target for yeah. uh, Sirius? We just and got we- Sirius radio. Yeah. Also, I, do I have to listen to that show? Because then I'm done. I'm not, not going to get the car. If that's the deal. Is the show in this car? I yeah. don't want this car. The show is in it. Oh, if she broadcasts from here? Okay, now I'm going to... If she broadcasts from here, I'll buy the car and crash the car. <laughs> it's worth my life. To yeah. Take her off Earth. So, you know how we, where we worry about repeating ourselves? Like, did we do this song or whatever? Yeah. I made a clue that I think is amazing. And then I'm like, have I done this clue before? <laughs> if you have, do you think there's any chance I'd remember it? <laughs> yeah, probably. No, we're delightfully into our dotage. Yeah. I like this clue because it's a whimsical clue about a song that is not whimsical. And that amuses me. Hmm. And uh, so I'll tell you, like, that guy is a fairly popular comedian. Oh, okay. But look at his fat face. So he's clearly got to be a comedian not from the United States. He's he's popular. He's Because he's not fat in the right way. Because he's not fat down, like, just fat and fun and fat. He's just jowly. Yeah. And no insult, sir, if you're watching. I like your face. I'm just saying the way Hollywood works. In Hollywood, you either have to be a giant fat guy everywhere or everything yeah. works. Yeah. And very a little of that works. It is odd. And that haircut is a is a cut that if I'm standing next to it, I feel okay about my hair, is what I'll say. Right. It's good hair. Yeah, it's, it's plenty of it. Yeah. So he's a comedian, and so he's British. He's British. 
And this dumb clue is, is his name is mentioned in this song. But it's <laughs> mentioned broken up. And in the context of the song, it's not referring, the names are not referring to a person. It's referring to a people. Okay. Oh, boy. To a people. Yeah. At least one of them is referring to a, to a people fairly derisively. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of clue. Yeah. It's getting me nowhere. Is his name Space Monkey Mafia? <laughs> I know. That would be pretty great. <laughs> It's a first, just a nice regular old first name and a nice last name. And it's a name, if it's a name of a, a, a guy, yeah, nothing offensive about it. Sure. But if you were to call these people that, it references a pretty brutal experience and it's not friendly. <laughs> wow. War. No. We are close, man. War is close. Oh, war, Warren. <laughs> well, no war. the The idea of war is close. Or battle. Battle is a name. Yeah. Uh, boy. But what if it was a song about a war? Uh, Holocaust Jones. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that's right. Because if you know a guy named Holocaust, that's benign. <laughs> <laughs> um it's a real name that happens to be applied sure to, as a pejorative to a group wow and the pejorative i think was made up by the military uh, is it charlie and i don't know his last name you you almost do though long right? is good night saigon yeah remember charlie is remember? it charlie baker it's Charlie Baker. <laughs> that's Charlie Baker. Charlie Baker. Oh, and, that's I, great. and I thought of the clue thinking, oh, there's got to be somebody named Charlie Baker. That seems funny. If there's somebody famous, and I probably could have looked more because I think there's also an old blues magician. Ma magician. Yeah, there's an old blues magician. <laughs> Remember the old blues magicians? Oh, yeah. We used to go down to the House of Blue Light. Yeah, that's right. Check out some magic. And the guy would get up there and go, yeah, now I'm going to take this here rabbit. Oh, I mean, this rabbit been through a lot. Put it in my hat. <laughs> really like, all right, my woman done left me. Uh, now she's back. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's the perfect blues magician in a <laughs> sketch. My woman done left me. But da, 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 da. <laughs> she's back. That's so great. Uh. Is this your card? I sure as hell know it ain't my card. I can't afford no cards. <laughs> All I got is this here harmonica. Charlie Baker, babies. Charlie Baker. God bless you. I hope he's funny. I have no idea. Great. I just know that's his picture. <laughs> I hope we find out he did something terrible and that I shouldn't have. Oh, man, if you know, put it in the comments. Yeah. You must know. Yeah. Um, actually, he's more famous for the thing he did to that lady. Oh, no, Charlie Baker. Oh, man. God damn it. Charlie Baker's canceled, everybody. Oh. You got some trivia for me? You've had... What? I'm going to have to think of it. I had some trivia last uh, last time we spoke, and I have forgotten what it was. Nice. So I guess the question is, what was my trivia question? You have three guesses. Hold on, my producer thinks maybe. What, babe? I don't think so. I mean, I think there's only one Billy Joel studio song that mentions Christmas by name. Christmas in Fallujah? No <laughs> studio album song. A no studio album song. So that'll be the question. Name any Billy Joel studio album song that mentions Christmas. I can only think of one. Well, hello. That's an interesting question. Um, let 
you know, I'm I'm Rolodexing. Mm -hmm. We need your answer soon, Mr. Data. Yes. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. Nice job. Um, fuck. All right. This is a... Because I almost feel like I've never heard the word Christmas in our show in related to a Billy. So maybe we've never even talked about the song. I feel like we did the song, but I might be wrong. We might have done it very early. Okay. And I'll give you the line. Turn on all the Christmas lights. My baby's coming home tonight. <laughs> Are you having a stroke? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. No, I ain't got it. What is it? She's right on time. She's right on time. And that makes sense. Damn. All right. And you're right. We did talk about that. Yeah. It was a great song. Yeah. Wow. It's it's hard out here, man. I did not have a shot at that, but I I tried. I was I, the problem with me and Billy Joel is it's like for sure if, if I'm thinking of a song, I'm I could think of a lot of songs, but for sure I'm probably thinking of one of nine songs that I love, love, love. Yes. And so I'm like, well, <laughs> Brandon and Eddie weren't celebrating Christmas, so <laughs> nope. From the high to the low to the end of the show. To the end of the show. Hey, bud. Um, what are you doing for Christmas, I ask you, as you wear your Star of David? Oh, I'm eating Chinese food. Fantastic. Yep. And uh, we did get... Oh, I will tell you this. This will be... No, get off of here. Get off of here, mama. There you go. There you go. Um, I will tell you. Let me let Tinkerbell out. I think she's going to pop. <laughs> Mary Jo, come get Tinkerbell. All right. Um, so we're going to get Chinese food. We will have a tree because the lady likes having a tree. Uh, right. We got some presents to exchange. But today, my wife is an incredible lady. You know, we do not have kids. Uh, we intended to. They did not work out. And that's fine. We have lovely dogs. She found a less fortunate family who have oh. a lovely child named Pedro who uh, is uh, autistic, nonverbal, beautiful child, young man. And he had a specific ask. The way that, so a lot of times with autistic kids and kids in general, but particularly autistic kids, they'll get a hold of an idea and they can't let go of it. Sure. And he really wanted a Nintendo Wii, which is a system that isn't manufactured anymore, of course. Yeah. So the parents were reaching out to the community at large in this group she's a part of. Well, we have a Nintendo Wii with a lot of games, and we were like, all right, let's gift this to them. And we tested everything to make sure he's not getting garbage. Right. Um, it works. And then I was like, well, why don't I go out and get also a new toy? So I went out and got a Hot Wheel set and a Hot Wheel thing that makes the car on a spring loaded so you can play with the cars. I'm like, there's no way he's not going to love this. Yeah, you would think. Great. And Mary Jo fixed the holiday because I was feeling a little depressed. Yeah, so nice. Everything done. because we did a thing for this kid and like that went inside here. <laughs> and I was like, oh, OK, I'm feeling oh, that's what I needed. I needed to do something that was outside of myself. Yeah, that's usually very often the answer. And she <laughs> nailed it, man. My wife nailed it. I was like, I'm very proud of her. And I was like, let's just that'll be our new thing. Every Christmas, let's find a kid who needs something, parents who might need a little something, and put our money in that direction because we're not suffering for money. We're very lucky. Right. And plenty of people are. Yeah. You know? Um, nicely done. Yeah. Great. So that's what we're doing. What are you doing for Christmas? We are, Sue and I are going to do our little Christmas right after this. And then tomorrow morning, we fly to Arizona. Oh, nice my fam and uh, uh yeah see um how that goes yeah well my condolences thank you thank you but, but tonight will be beautiful tonight will be beautiful and uh, i'll have sue with me so nothing can really go wrong that's right 
Um, I picked a song. What you got? 95 Surprises. Oh, I love. Yeah, Surprises. Surprises. And I was delighted to go, oh, we haven't talked about this. So it was like a damn miracle. Oh, that's fantastic. It's a great song. Yeah. And so this was different. part two. I hope you guys enjoyed it too, partner. <laughs> Did you all guess the cliffhanger correctly? Because <laughs> there was no guaranteeing we were going to get around to it. Oh, 